Well hello, and something a bit different today because it's fixed wing. Got this through the post from the good folks at Banggood. It is the, and this is the trickiest part, how to say that. Zode? ZOHD? I don't know. Anyway, this is called the Zode Dart. It's uh, a little wing with swept forward wings. And the thing that really appealed to me is it said it would completely break down and be very travel friendly. Now when I fly, I do it from a backpack. I have to walk about half an hour to the field. Um, and this is part of the reason I don't fly planes very often is that they're much harder to carry than quads which I can just stick in the backpack or on the backpack. So I was very interested in the fact if this would fold down as small as this box then this could be very useful for me. So let's actually see what's in here shall we? As you might expect a bunch of bubble wrapped components, wings, a fuse, some winglets, a little spar and a few instructions. But this is where the system gets really neat because often yeah, you might have these uh, easy to install wings and things, but I notice on this one there's no servo ends. And what you've got is this little connector here and a similar one on the wing here. So this is how hard it is to install a wing. You simply do that, put the spar down the middle, get the other wing on, wings are in. The winglets, geniusly, have just a little piece of magnet that goes on like this. The plane is put together. That's amazing. Now, another interesting thing, if I just open this, what we have in here is a prop to put on. This little circular thing, which I think is for getting the, the camera in properly in here. But if you look inside here, aside from the fact there's a 12 amp C, the motor's installed, this is a 2006, 2400 kV. Uh, it's designed to run off 3S. There's also, if you look here, a little stabiliser, which is cool. And uh, obviously your servos are pre-installed. I think these are 4.6 grams. So it's pretty lightweight, but just the fact that it comes up and down that quickly uh, and literally will go back in the same box if you want to is really very appealing. So this version doesn't come with any FPV gear um, so what I need to do is add a camera which will stick through this little hole here handily provided. Um, there's space here for a battery they suggest 1000 to 1300 3S. I've got a bunch of um, uh, looking at that one, well, that's a 4S, but I've got a bunch of 1300 3S's from the quads. And obviously I need to put a VTX in here and a receiver, which there's a, a good deal of space there. It's really just a case of um, where we're going to bring the antennas up for the free sky and the VTX. And probably at the back here, I think, just a little notch in this bit to bring it up. But I think this is going to be you call it a build, it's more like a bit of installation. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how the stabiliser works, and this is pretty much what these instructions are about. These instructions seem to suggest it's a 30 amp PSC, the website says 12. It says 30 amps on it, I do apologise, the website's wrong. 30 amp PSC, there you go. Looks a bit small to me, but okay. Let's get the stuff in and see what happens. Now one problem during setup, and I actually thought I recorded this on my GoPro, but it turns out I didn't. If we look at the instructions, what they are, there's a little bit here that says you can use PPM on that channel. And I thought, brilliant. I'll use my X4R and I'll put my jumper between pins 3 and 4 and bind it and that puts out PPM on channel 1. Except it didn't quite work. The channels 1 and 2 seemed to kind of work, but at the extent of the stick there was jittiness and it all seemed a bit dodgy and the throttle didn't work at all. And I had a quick look online about this and other people found specifically the throttle that seemed to be problems when they were using PPM receivers. Um, so I've had to change over to an old D4R2 which just used a straight PWM and that's fine. But uh, just a warning there, there, there it uses PPM doesn't seem to work as far as I can see. And look we have a plane all set up and ready to go. Not um, too much to do and it fit in reasonably easy and I have to say I'm one of the worst people imaginable for trying to fit things in. People can fit amazing things in and get really neatly. I get a massive space I can like put two things in and, and still have it poking out the sides. 
So what I've done here, I've just cut a little slot there. So this pagoda antenna fits, but this isn't a very clear. So let's zoom in and I'll show you exactly what I've done. Okay, so let's have a quick close up look of what we've got inside here. If I pull this out, I've cut a little slot there just to go in that hole. So at the front here, this is a Runcam Swift 2. It's going to focus. Fits in there quite nicely and of course I've got the voltage from the battery coming in to help. It's not a particularly clean installation as is all my installations. That's mostly because I've got wires feeding around everywhere. I've got the um, 1.3 amp 3S battery which sits there quite nicely. It's just slightly back to get the CFG right which you can do easily by just strapping it down in the right place. That's not moving anywhere. As we mentioned the X4R even speaking PPM it did not work so I've got all normal PWM going into the, the stabiliser there. No mixes in the radio, it does that bit for you. And under all that lot, just down there, is an Amway 200 milliwatt VTX, mainly because it's pushing out a nice clean 5 volts to the camera to run it. I've also got a, a little 90 degree elbow there, just in case I want to unscrew this to pack it down even further. And my free sky antennas, I've just got hanging around loose. Now that's, I know that that's going to affect range. If you if you want to hold them properly at 45 degrees you'll get best range. But this this isn't a long range plane by any means. It's just a, a mess around plane. You can see the rapid flashing of the stabilizer which means it's uh, calibrating. Now this blue mode is a sort of auto launch mode. Now I found it quite interesting. If I wave it up and down nothing happens. And you've got two other modes here. I've put on a switch. So if I change switch, the flashing light means it's off. The red light is free axis stabilization. But again, nothing, nothing moving there. And you can see it's, it does the mixing. Okay, I've got good movement there. But if I power up, look what happens. You should see that the ailerons come up a little bit. As I increase the throttle, they go up. This is sort of an auto launch mode, and then if I move them around, that works. And after this point, as soon as the throttle gets used, it's like it all kicks in. Which I just thought was kind of a bit of an odd way of it working. <laughs> and you can see it all fits in reasonably neatly. That still holds down really nicely. And we're all ready to go. The wing's got these little nubs, handily labelled CG. So if you put your fingers on there, we get a pretty good balance. A little bit on the nose, we can move the battery back if I want to. Um, the other thing I've done is I've just put a little bit of fibre tape on the leading edges of the wings here and some on the base here because that field at the moment is just like slushy mud. So wherever it lands I'm going to expect it to change colour from this lovely clean white to a very rapid brown very quickly indeed. Yeah, the reason I wanted to do this part one is, despite the lovely sun coming in at the moment, there's very strong winds right now. But hopefully in the next few days or so, uh, it'll be a bit lighter and I can actually get this going. Still not quite sure how to launch it at the moment. It's, I want to be able to hold it here, but there's nothing there. I could go like that. I think so. I don't want to hold it by the wing necessarily, because you don't have to give an awful lot of pressure for the wings to come out. So, check it like that. Anyway, join me in part two. We'll put this in the field. Hopefully we won't crash it and kill it and get it all horrible and dirty, but it's about 50-50. See you later. Bye.